Hello math class, welcome back to another lecture. This is lesson three of the third unit. Uh, it's titled Proving and Applying the Cosine Law. And you might do a little double take. I thought we were doing the sine law, which we did. We did the sine law in section 3.2. And now we're moving into the cosine law before we can get into even more complex problems. We're going to be able to use both of these in different situations. Uh, so it was important uh, for us to introduce this one in this place and then we can um, you know use both laws in problems as we move forward. You can see over here on the screen and on your booklet there are the law of cosines. These are the three cosine laws and there is one for every angle essentially in the triangle cosine A, cos B, and cos C and they each have a specific setup where the side that is across from the angle goes out front um, and is squared. We will get used to using these and these will be available to you. You don't need to memorize these particular equations. So first of all, we're going to investigate why we can't always use the sine law. So if we have a triangle like this, let's imagine. Let's not imagine, let's just look. We have a triangle like this with two sides, 3.2 and 3.1. And then we're given an angle of 66. Uh, in, when we want to use the sine law, we need a side or an angle across from what we already have. We would need this side, which we do not have. We would need this angle, which we do not have. And we would need this angle, which we do not have. So this is a situation where although we have three pieces of information, the sine law does not apply. And I can draw another triangle, another situation where the sine law doesn't apply, but where we will be able to use the cosine law. So I have another triangle here. Ooh, let's draw this. There we go. Another triangle here. We have 2.6 for this side, 2.5 for this side, and 3.6 for this side. We do not have any of the corresponding angles that we would need to complete this problem. Therefore, again, the sine law does not apply in this situation. So what is the cosine law? Like, how did we get it? Uh, so what we're going to do is, because there's two unknowns in each pair of ratios in the sine law, we just can't use it. Um, we can't use it to solve for unknowns. We need another relationship, the cosine law. And it's derived from Pythagorean theorem. So something that you're a little bit familiar with, maybe. Uh, so we're going to start with a triangle. Now, there's not a whole ton of space, so you'll have to maybe write a little bit smaller than you usually would. But this is not, uh, you won't need to memorize this or prove this again. This is just so that we can figure out how this works. So if we have a triangle like this, a line dividing it for its height, this would be point A, we have point B, C, side C, side B. This whole thing is side A and split up into parts X and Y. So now when I refer to these, I'm going to refer like H is the height and C is the side C. I'll refer to angle C for this one. So let's start with Pythagorean's theorem. Um, we have h squared would be equal to c squared minus x squared. So h squared would be equal to c squared minus x squared. So this is the uh, hypotenuse. So we would subtract one of the other sides when trying to find um, one of the shorter sides. So h squared is equal to c squared minus x squared. And we also have another uh, relationship on the other side. h squared is equal to b squared minus y squared. So we have two relationships here. Uh, therefore, using the transitive property, we can say that these two things are equal to one another. So therefore, c squared minus x squared is equal to b squared minus y squared. Uh, we can rearrange this a little bit to get c squared all by itself on this side. So that's the same as saying c squared is equal to x squared 
plus b squared minus y squared. And I know that a is equal to the sum of x and y. So I can write this as a is equal to x plus y. And I'm going to rearrange this for x so I can plug it into here. And then I will be able to get rid of, uh, pardon me, yeah, so I'll rearrange this for x. I'll have x is equal to a minus y. And now I can take this bit and plug it into here because x equals this. I have an x here, I can plug this in. And what this does is this gets rid of x in this equation. And it's very handy. We don't want x in here. We, uh, it's an awkward number. We don't know what it is because we've drawn a line to separate a into two parts. So it, it is for sure going to be an unknown. We want to get rid of it. So this turns into c squared is equal to x squared. Well, x is a minus y. So that's a minus y squared plus b squared minus y squared. And if you're going like, wow, this is complicated, this is a little bit complicated. Again, I'm just showing you this so you know how we get to the equation overall. So you have a general idea. I didn't just pull these things out of nowhere. I'm going to multiply this uh, out. So I'm going to FOIL it. So c squared is equal to a squared minus 2ay uh, plus y squared plus b squared minus y squared. You can see that we have a plus y squared and a minus y squared. So those are going to cancel out. We are left then with c squared is equal to a squared minus 2ay plus b squared. Almost forgot it. I felt like I was forgetting something. So we're almost to a point where it is only sides and angles, but we still have this y in here that we do not like. So we are going to come up with another expression so that we can get rid of it. It is going to be a um, trigonometric ratio expression. It's going to be a cos expression, hence the cosine law. So we know that we can, that if the cos of angle C equal to uh, adjacent over hypotenuse, which is Y over B in this case, I can rearrange this for y. y is equal to cosine of c times b. And now I can plug this into here. I'm left with c squared is equal to a squared. I'm going to move this b squared plus b squared minus 2ab times the cosine of c. So I am left with an equation that only has sides and an angle. Sides and an angle. We don't have any of this x, y in there, terms that we don't know. Uh, and we can duplicate this a couple more times if we wanted to for the other angles, cos of b and cos of a. But you can hopefully trust me that we can use this in many different situations. Let's get into, act, get into actually using it. Oh, we have some more questions first. So sorry. So just to kind of review, why did we draw the height uh, from A to D in step one? Uh, what we wanted to do was we wanted to create two right angle triangles. So to create two right angle triangles. Uh, for B, step two, we created two expressions for H squared. Uh, why did we uh, explain how we did this? Um, well, we used Pythagorean's theorem for both sides of the triangle. So used used the Pythagorean theorem. For C. Explain why we can set the expressions equal to one another. Ah, this is my favorite one. 
the transitive property. Because of the transitive property, if, they, if two things equal the same thing, they must equal each other. D, why did we eliminate variable x? Um, the reason that we eliminated variable x, as well as y, really, uh, was because we don't know that value. And we wanted to get it in just terms of sides and angles. That was our goal. And E, explain why the final equation is the most useful form of the cosine law. Uh, that form, uh, often what we want to find is a side, and it is set up in the most convenient way to find a side. So, um, the unknown side is the most convenient to find. Okay, let's do an example of us actually using it. So we have this triangle, and you're going to use it in the next section as well. Uh, so sure that you can flip back and forth, but we want to determine the length of CB, this side right here. So we're going to actually call that side A, small a. If we look back on our uh, equation, uh, if we're looking for side A, we have A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared minus 2BC and then it's multiplied by the cosine of the angle A across from it. It'd be cosine of angle A. And I have all those. I have uh, side B, I have side C, I have angle A. I should be able to find out what A squared is just by square rooting all of this. So A is equal to the root of 32 squared plus 40 squared, subtract 2 times 32 times 40 times the cosine of 58 degrees. So what I would do is I would do this all individually first. I would find out what the uh, 32 squared is and write that number down. Find out what 40 squared is and write that number down. I would find out what the cos of 58 is, multiplied by 40 times 32 times 2, write that all down add them all up and square root them. What we find out is that A is equal to 35.6 meters. And that makes sense. It is somewhere around 32 and 40. That's nothing crazy. So that answer makes sense to me. Uh, what I'd like you guys to do now is give it a try um, to determining the length of CB, which we just did. The sine law was used to determine that the measure of angle B is 50 degrees and angle C must be 72. Use the cosine law to verify both of these solutions. So pause it here and give it a try and uh, unpause it when you're ready and we'll go over it. Okay. So if the angles really are 72 and 50, when we plug everything into the cosine law, the left-hand side should equal the right-hand side. So that is the key to this. The left-hand sh side should equal the right-hand side, or at least it should be very close. If the angles are truly 72 degrees and 50 degrees, okay? If they are, the left-hand side of the equation will equal the right-hand side. Uh, so we are going to use the 72 degree angle first and the one uh, the side that is across from the 72 degree angle is uh, the 40 the 40 meter length so that means that 40 meters squared is going to be uh, on this side and uh, the other two are going to be on the other side of the equal sign so that would be 35.6 squared uh, plus 32 squared, those are the other two sides. Subtract 2 times 35.6 times 32 times the cosine of 72. And if it really is 72 degrees, then this side, 
will equal this side. And this side is 1600. So let's find out if this altogether equals 1600. Um, again, I would do each part separately and add them all up. What we find is that this equals 1587. So this is close. So it's close to 72 degrees, something like that. Uh, maybe it's 71 and a half, maybe it's 72 and a half, but overall this looks like uh, it would be okay. Let's try the other one to see if it really is 50 degrees. Across from the 50 degree angle was the side 32. So that means 32 is what we have out here, 32 squared. And the other two sides go in these slots. That would be 40 squared plus 35.6 squared. Subtract two times 40 times 35.6 times the cosine of 50, the angle that is across from the side that is out here. 32 squared is 1024. So if this side all adds up to equal 1024, that would be correct. Again, do each piece separately and add them together. This would equal 1037. So again, we're close. Um, I would give them the benefit of the doubt and say that they are correct. Maybe not exactly correct, but close enough. Um, so therefore, they are close, but not exact. Okay, let's do a few more examples. So we have this uh, diagram here. It shows the plan for a roof with support DE parallel to AB. The local building code requires the angle formed at the peak of a roof to fall within the 70 degrees, within range of 70 to 80 degrees, so that snow and ice will not build up. It should say not build up, not now. Will this plan pass uh, the local building code? So essentially what we wanna do is if we have This is our diagram here. What we wanna find out is what this angle is. And if it's between 70 and 80 degrees, this will be up to code. So let's write what we know. We have 10 over here. We know this is 19.5 right here. I turned this into feet, 10 feet, 19 feet, six inches is 19.5 feet. And down at the bottom, we have 20 feet. So I know all the sides and no angles. I need to find that angle. The angle that I want is going to be um, opposite of a side, and that side is going to be on the left side of the equal sign. So I'm going to start with my equation. So this would be side B. So B squared is going to be equal to A squared plus C squared minus 2AC times the cosine of angle B. Now I'm looking for cosine uh, angle B in this one. So there's going to be some rearranging to do. Uh, what we want to do, we're going to subtract these from this side and divide by 2AC. So whenever we're looking for uh, the cosine of B, we're going to have this equation. The cosine B is equal to B squared minus A squared minus C squared divided by negative 2AC. And after we find this number, we'll need to do the inverse cosine uh, to find out what the angle should be. So let's plug in our uh, numbers. Cosine B is equal to 20 squared minus 10 squared minus 19.5 squared, all divided by 2 times 10 times 19.5. Uh, what we would find out, we would find out what number this is. Uh, this would end up being, we have negative 80.25 over negative 390. And then I'm going to need to inverse cosine this. So the inverse cosine of negative 80.25 divided by negative 390 will give me angle B. So 
I punch that into my calculator, punch this number divided by this number, and then cosine inverse, we get 78 degrees. So since 78 degrees is between 70 and 80, this will pass. Yay, this will pass code. If you have any particular questions about this one, please let me know. Um, but practice, practice, practice is the number one thing that we can do. I think we have one more problem to do. Yes, we have one more problem together. And in this one, we are given a situation um, where we have two sides and an angle, and we want to find out the uh, side that is left. Um, so, a three-pointed star is made up of equilateral triangle and three congruent isosceles triangles. So, equilateral in the middle, isosceles around the outside. Determine the size of each length, um, of each side of the equilateral triangle. Well, I know they're going to be the same, so I only need to find one. And I can pretty clearly use um, the cosine law. I have two sides in an angle all beside each other to find out what this side would be. The unknown side is across from the angle, which is exactly what I need. So I'm going to call that, I'm just going to call it side A. I don't know. We don't really need to go any farther than that. And it will be equal to the root of B squared plus C squared minus 2AC times the cosine of a that's equal to the root of 60 squared plus 60 squared minus 2 times 60 times 60 times the cosine of 20 degrees and what we found out is that this would be a would be 21 centimeters so each of the three sides is 21 centimeters side length of the triangle. So if you have any questions about that, please let me know. Uh, if you saw any mistakes that I made, uh, definitely we can talk about those. And uh, yeah, there's lots of problems for you to do. Uh, definitely give as many as you can a try. And I'll see you soon. Thanks so much, everyone.